Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the teams that can flip their conference on its head in the Power Four. Tennessee is the big one for me. I think they can do pretty much anything this upcoming year as long as Nico Iamaliava comes into place the way that they expect, but a number of other teams that absolutely can make that noise as well. But let's get into segment four here, and it's all about recruiting. There is so much stuff going on in the world of recruiting that we just got to keep up with it. It's incredible how much stuff is happening every single day, and it's not the easiest thing to keep up with, but we're going to do our best right here. And the biggest one of the weekend was DeCorian Moore. Uh, DeCorian Moore is the number one wide receiver in the country. He was committed to LSU in the past, has committed to Oregon now. Um, this is a huge, huge win for Oregon, the biggest commit they have ever had in their history. So that's a huge moment for the program, for Dan Lanning, and everything for the Ducks moving on. Texas is the one that missed out here. Um, LSU and Ohio State were in this conversation, but really towards the end of the day, it was a Oregon against Texas battle, and Oregon won. Um, and a lot of people are pointing towards NIL and that type of thing, and obviously that's going to play a part in some of these recruitments, but Oregon just out-recruited Texas is what it sounds like. Um, Oregon pitched, the, pitched him a vision of come be different, come do something that no one else is willing to do, that everyone you know wants you to stay in Texas, be, uh, you know, different, you know, come out here, be part of what we're building in Oregon. And it worked. Um, so at the end of the day, we can talk about Oregon, you know, going after NIL a ton, and they should, because of the people that they have in their alumni base. But regardless, this just seems like really good recruiting by Oregon. And I think they just did a better job than all the other teams at the end of the day. Um, but it does make guys for Texas like Kalik Lockett, uh, Jamie French, Kelshawn Johnson making a decision here pretty soon that got messed up a little bit by the hurricane coming through Texas. Hope everyone is okay there. Um, but overall, those are super important guys. If they want to have the wide receiver class that they can have and still be a very, very good class with uh, even without DeCorey and Moore, but that's a huge hit, and they're going to have to definitely take some big-time steps forward over the next couple of weeks at that position in particular. But that's not where the uh, bad news stopped for Texas by any means. Uh, Riley Pettijohn, a very talented linebacker, the top one of the top linebackers in the class, committed to Ohio State over the weekend. Another one that Texas led for until the last couple of weeks and not really sure exactly what happened that pushed him towards Ohio State, but regardless, a huge win for Ohio State. If you are a Texas fan, the guy that, to watch going forward is Madden Faramo, a very talented guy, a heavy Notre Dame lean right now, but Johnny Nansen, the linebacker coach down in Texas, has a ton of ties there, so that's one that they're trying to kind of win over right now. So Definitely not the loss that they wanted. This is a guy that they very much expected to be in the fold, at least up until about a week ago. So not necessarily the best of times down in uh, Texas recruiting. And then finally, losing Brandon Brown to uh, LSU over the weekend. He flipped from Texas to LSU is a huge one, but it's a much more expected than the other ones. He had a great relationship with Bo Davis, who left Texas to go to LSU. This one was just kind of expected. And also, Kenny Baker is the new defensive line coach down there at Texas, and he came from the NFL. Um, so it's never going to be easy for him to get some of the connections, some of the um, you know networking that needs to be done to be an elite recruiter, especially in the state of Texas. It's going to take him, take him some time, but the reality is if Alfred Collins, if Vernon Broaden, if all of those big-time guys play at an elite level this upcoming year, it won't be a problem going forward. It's just, as of right now, they don't know what to expect, so it's it definitely a, a fight that Texas is really in the throes of right now, but... Kate Phillips is one that kind of softened the blow just a little bit. A four-star DB did commit to Texas this past weekend. A big-time pickup there. Someone that they very much like. And I think this is one that could be the start of a good little stretch here for Texas. I think Kalik Lockett is going to make a decision here pretty soon. So is Kelshawn Johnson and some other guys that Texas is definitely in the uh, milieu for. I think one guy that they just need is Michael Fasusi. Uh, if they cannot bring in Michael Fasusi and he ends up going to A&M, then it's panic time. But as of right now, you're just you're looking a, a little bit worried. Let's just put it that way over at Texas. But another team I want to touch on is Missouri. Uh, Lamont Rogers, a very, very talented offensive tackle, 6'7", 322, four-star out of Mesquite, Texas. He's going to Missouri, and this is another one that Texas lost. This was a more of a Missouri OU battle towards the end, but Texas was absolutely in on this thing. So Lamont Rogers, a very, very talented player. Missouri just 
continues to do work on the recruiting trail. It's really remarkable to watch how quickly this ter- thing has turned into a terrifying recruiting entity, to be totally honest. And then you have J- uh, Javon Boggs, a very talented four-star receiver. I think this guy is going to be a game-changer from the get-go, if I'm being totally honest. Was an Ohio State commit, but found his way back around to Mizzou. They also got Donovan Ugl- Olu. Oluk Bode, I, I don't I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but he is committed to Missouri as well, a big time com- uh, commitment there, and elite recruiting is just who Missouri is at this point. Eli Drinkwitz and the Tigers have really created a remarkable, remarkable um, group out there, and they're just doing work on the recruiting trail. Uh, Miami also had a huge weekend. Hilton Stubbs, a very talented four-star that decommitted from USC just a little bit ago, has committed to Miami officially, a big-time commitment there. They also got a big-time commitment from four-star interior uh, offensive lineman CJ Alufatuli. Alu Fatuli, I'm going to do my best. Um, a very talented four-star interior offensive lineman, definitely a really talented guy that they were battling Michigan and Nebraska for. So when you can win those offensive line battles, absolutely huge between those two teams. And then DJ Pickett, another guy I want to talk about, the top cornerback in the country. He's between LSU, uh, excuse me, LSU, Miami, and Oregon. Whoever wins out there is going to get a huge player in. Oregon's looking really impossible to beat right now, but Miami and LSU, frankly, are very much in this fight as well. But let's get to some other commitments, and we're going to move a little bit rapid fire here. Ty Hawkins, a very talented kid, has decommitted from TCU and committed to SMU. There's a big-time pickup at the quarterback position for them, and SMU is one that is getting a little bit scary. I'll just be totally honest. We'll unpack that a little bit more throughout the week. But Jalen Cooper is another four-star wide receiver. They got committed to SMU this weekend. So an elite duo coming to Dallas, that's for sure. LSU did not stop at Brandon Brown on the defensive line. They got Zion Williams, an elite defensive lineman, to commit to LSU, a big-time player that was had offers from everyone. And Bo Davis is finally getting the guys that he needs to get. And It's only a matter of time until they turn into just a scary group out there in Baton Rouge. So, obviously, this is a huge time commitment, but Damian uh, Shanklin is an absolutely big commitment as well, coming off the edge. He is someone that, it was a Bama-LSU battle, so that's always a great one to win for LSU. They love winning those battles, and it'll be fascinating to watch this one unfold. A very, very good weekend for LSU, for sure. Florida State got in on the uh, action a little bit. Peyton Joseph, a very talented offensive line commit, uh, four-star interior offensive lineman, was previously committed to Florida, so that's always a little bit of a fun one for the Knowles fans out there to stick it to Florida a little bit. But uh, moving on here, we have a four-star safety, Jadon Blair, a very talented kid out of Notre Dame. He is someone that is definitely going to be a huge piece of this class because it sounds like their other top safety Ivan Taylor might be heading towards Michigan I believe he got an extra prediction from uh, Steve Wiltfong over the weekend so that's definitely one to watch on the other side of this you know you get a commitment sometimes you lose a commitment from that position so obviously a big time pickup there but Notre Dame could be losing the biggest guy in their class in Ivan Taylor um, and then you have Omarion Robinson, a very talented safety, heading to Oklahoma, a big-time pickup, and Oklahoma just continues to bring in guys. It's not necessarily an onslaught of dudes all at once, but it's just a couple of guys every couple of weeks, and they're just doing really, really good work on the recruiting trail right now. And then finally, Shamari Earls, a very, very talented kid uh, that was committed to South Carolina, now committed to Georgia. So another big-time win against a team that I'm sure Georgia loves getting wins over. Uh, The number eight cornerback in the country, according to On3, so a very talented kid. Definitely a big-time pickup for uh, Georgia. So a lot going on in recruiting, to say the least. There are so many commitments, so many decommitments, and so many things to watch. Uh, David Sanders dropped his uh, top four that didn't have Clemson in it, which was very, very interesting. This is a number two player in the country, so that'll definitely be one to watch. It sounds like Georgia is kind of leading just a little bit, but Tennessee is pushing, Nebraska is pushing, Ohio State's pushing. So we'll figure out what happens with that one. Just so much stuff going on in the world of recruiting, but overall, the things to watch as we get throughout the rest of this month is 
what does Texas do throughout the rest of this month? Is LSU, Miami, Oregon, do they continue to surge? Is Bama still have a little bit left in the tank and making some things happen behind closed doors? So a ton of stuff to follow over the next little bit, and we absolutely will keep you updated. But let's take our final break here, and when we come back, we're going to do a little bit of a different segment, a Monday roundup where we just go around some news in college football. There's been a ton of big-time headlines that – have been not so great headlines, frankly, but I want to break them down for you, get you guys updated on everything going on in our sport. So we'll break that down right after this, so stick with us.